Oh, yeah, how's your fever? You feeling better now? Yes, I'm fine. Let me see your forehead. Oh! I <laughs> guess it really has gone down. Are you <laughs> worried about me? Yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> By the way, Jumpy? Hmm? How did you end up here? What do you mean? I told you earlier, didn't I? There was a man with a gas mask when you got home at night. You inhaled some white smoke and passed out. When you woke up, you were on D-Deck. Damn straight. But is that really the truth? What? Jumpy, are you hiding something from me? No, why would I? Well, if you think about it, this is awfully suspicious. I mean, why would two childhood friends bump into each other in a place like this? Hey, I could ask you the same thing. Are you hiding something? What would I hide? Well, I, I don't know. Anything. I mean, you're hiding it. How would I know? You mean, like, the number of men I've dated? <laughs> Do you want to know? <sighs> don't worry. Only 18. <sighs> Time zero. Yeah, I guess I just haven't met Mr. Wright yet. Yeah, yeah, I, I... Anyway, I'm not hiding anything. Just like you, Jumpy. When I woke up, I was on D-Deck. Well, you do have a point. I mean, why did Zero pick us? We haven't seen each other since elementary school. Hmm, I wonder. Look for what connects the victims. That will lead you to the culprit. Do you remember Seven saying something like that? Yeah, I do. So? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think this must all have something to do with a classmate of ours. You got any ideas who it might be? No, nothing. Oh, um... Well, if it had something to do with school, then it could be one of our teachers, or maybe the principal? Or the janitor, or the lunch lady. Oh, I can barely remember any of them. Yeah, I know. This ship is bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's probably about 900 feet long. Must be one of those fancy cruise ships. Of course, it doesn't really look like a cruise ship. Everything in here is really retro. Huh. Even if it's just some sort of style choice, there's just too much. Do you remember what Zero said? <laughs> Do you think maybe this boat and the Titanic have something to do with each other? Hmm, that's a good point. I doubt he would have mentioned it if there wasn't a reason. Hmm. Do you think this boat is...
A replica of the Titanic? A replica? Yeah, you know, like a copy of the actual boat. Who on earth would make something like that? Fans. Crazy Titanic fans. No way! Do you even know how much money that would take? No idea. But all they've got to do is break even, you know? Break even? Yeah, they could use it as a cruise ship. Climb aboard a piece of history, sail around the world in the resurrected Titanic. Hell, with marketing like that, they'd probably have more customers than they'd know what to do with. Do you really think people would want to ride on a ship with such an ominous past? It's the site of the worst accident in history. Uh, over 1,500 people died. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd get cursed just for going. A curse, huh? Jumpy, do you believe in that sort of thing? You know, curses and stuff? Yeah, well, um, I, I guess so, I, to a certain extent. Uh, what about you? Nah, I, I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Hmm. Yes, I do believe in curses. In fact, I think it was a curse that sunk the Titanic. What? A curse sank the Titanic. The curse of the Egyptian mummy. Supposedly, the Titanic carried the mummy of the priestess Amun-Ra, which was stolen from a pyramid. And they say that the mummy had a history. Everyone involved with it died mysterious deaths. Come on, I'm sure you've heard of it before. Those who open the coffin will be forever cursed. Uh, haven't you ever heard that one? So you're saying the Titanic sunk because of that curse? That's right! That mummy, the priestess, supposedly, she was special. What do you mean? Well, supposedly, she was really pretty. Pretty? Yes. But she was a mummy. That's right. She wasn't all shriveled up or rotten or anything. She almost looked alive. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, it's that thing. I uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, where your body turns into some kind of wax? Yeah? The fat in it turns into something kind of like candle wax, right? And... Yes, a pontification. But that's not what it was. Huh? That's not it. She wasn't wax. Then what was it? They say that she was frozen. What? They're frozen? That's right. The whole body was frozen solid. You know how a human body is more than 60% water? Well, all of that water was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery, all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic. Even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. That's crazy. <laughs> I think so too, but maybe it's true and we just didn't know about it before. I didn't know? Yep. Maybe it's common sense to eat shaved ice in the desert because it lasts forever. Huh? Th nah, that seems too silly to be true. But maybe it isn't. It just appears that way because you didn't know it was true. W well yeah, um... Ice that doesn't melt, even in the desert? Does, does something like that really exist? No, even if it did, it wouldn't really be ice anymore, would it? Hmm.
Hey, Junpei, you got a minute? Hmm? Here, take this. A bookmark? What is this for? Uh, do you want me to read a book? I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sure it ain't gonna be any help to us, but I figured we might as well hang on to it anyway. Then why don't you hold on to it? <laughs> you know what I hate most in the world? I got four things. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Hope, faith, love, and luck? Damn straight. And you hate these things? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Uh, not really, but what does a bookmark have to do with any of that? Well, see, each leaf on the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, okay? And that meaning is pretty much those four words. It's like a flower language. Well, I guess it's not a flower, is it? So, leaf language, I guess? Yeah, you could call them leaf words. Leaf words. Hope, faith, love, and luck. The meaning of the leaves on a four-leaf clover. So, yeah, I want you to take it, okay? Just touching it gives me the creeps. Take the damn thing, all right? Here. All right, sure. I'll take it. Oh, man, I feel a lot better now. That thing was a real pain, you know? Do you really hate those four words that much? Yeah, well, they can all betray you, you know? Hope, faith, love, even your destiny. Well, that's not my only reason. What? That's not the only reason I hate the four-leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. What, worried about the four horsemen? Nah, come on, man, that's just silly. Maybe back in the Dark Ages that kind of crap scared people. But this is the 21st century, and I'm a 21st century guy. I'm a little insulted. Then why do you hate four so much? Because it's a half-assed number. Not the best or the worst. That's why. It, what? Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? This is not some lame-ass middle number. What are you... You play? Play? You mean, like, gambling? Uh, yeah, of course. What else would I mean? Um... Uh... In Baccarat, the best possible hand totals nine. They call it Le Grand. But the lowest, most worthless cards, zeros, they call monkey. Just like the guy in charge of this game, huh? <laughs> Zero's a monkey. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're totally right. The guy who trapped us in here sure is one hell of a monkey. You know, if you think about it, the Nonary game is really a lot like Baccarat. And of course, it doesn't use any of that stupid digital root junk. You just drop the tens digit, and that's it. Still, it does have the same idea of your final number needing to be a single digit. Oh. Yeah. I guess you got a point. And in both games, whoever has nine wins. The person who makes nine wins? Wait, did you forget already? Don't you remember what Zero said? It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. So, if we want to get off this boat, we have to make a team whose numbers have the digital root of nine. And only the people in that team are going to make it out alive. Of course. That's why it's called the Nonary Game. What? Huh? You don't know? Nonary means something derived from nine or base nine. 
It's derived from the Latin prefix nona, which means nine. While we're at it, the prefix for one is uni. You know, like the unicorn, the horse with one horn. Two is bi, like binary. Binary means composed of two parts. Three is tri. I'm sure you've heard that one plenty. Like trio, triple, and triangle. After that, you have quart, quinty, sext, septum, and so on. And of course the prefix for eight is octo, like octopus. It's called that because it has eight legs. Get it? I see. So then Nona means nine. So, how many of us are trapped on this ship? That'd be nine. And what are the bracelet numbers we have? They go from one to nine. And our time limit? How many hours did we have? Zero said nine hours. And finally, to get out of this ship. We need to find the door with a nine that's hidden somewhere in the ship by making a team with the digital root of nine. And there you have it. The number nine is everywhere in this game. He's got a real theme of nines for this whole thing. No wonder it's called the Nonary.
I've seen this picture before. Where? In a book. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. I saw this picture in his book. What's this interesting theory? Morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Man, I can't deal with this. Just listening to you talk about it is giving me a headache. It's not a difficult concept to grasp. In essence, he states that the shape of living organisms and their behavioral patterns are transmitted through a field not visible to the eye. Uh, what part of that isn't difficult, exactly? All right, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Telepathy? Yes, telepathy. Well, perhaps not exactly telepathy, but it's close enough for a simple approximation. Serious? Taleb, who do you think we are? Kids from the 70s? I can't believe someone would actually do serious research on something like that. Yes, I agree. I read the book, but I can hardly say I understood it. I'm in no position to defend or condemn anything it said. It was probably just someone latching onto a statistical outlier from some study and turning it into a ridiculous theory. There's no scientific merit to any of it, I'm sure. But even so, I... Um... Anyway, I saw a picture like that one in his book. Hey, what do you think this picture looks like? What do you mean? Isn't it just like abstract or something like that? It's just black and white scribbles. There's no meaning there. That's... What about you, Junpei? Does it look like anything to you? Hmm, I, I guess it looks like... small boat floating in a lake? That's the front of the boat, and then there's the oars sticking out. Nope. You're wrong. This is a dog. See? Like this. So? Now we know what it's a picture of, but I, I don't see how that helps us. A TV show from Great Britain did an experiment once. They took two similar pictures. Both of them were difficult to identify, initially. But once you figured out the answer, you couldn't see it as anything else. These two pictures. The first was a woman wearing a hat. The other one, well, to make it easier. Let's just say it was this picture of a dog. So, their experiment. First, they sent the picture to other parts of the world, outside the reach of British airwaves. To Ireland, the US, Africa, Europe, etc. Then, in each country, they gathered a number of test subjects, roughly a thousand people. They were shown the two pictures and asked, what does this picture look like to you? The results weren't really interesting on their own. 9.2% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. 3.9% saw the dog in the dog picture. Then, two days later, they aired a new program on their show. During the 30-minute show, they broadcast the dog picture and its solution. The audience was estimated to be 200,000 people. After the broadcast, after another two days passed, they gathered more research subjects from areas outside the reach of British TV and radio. This time, they only found a sample of roughly 850 people. Naturally, none of them had participated in the first test. They were, however, given the same test and the same two pictures. The results were startling. 10% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. The previous test sat at a 9.2% success rate. Not much of a change, statistically. The dog picture, however, produced a very different result. 
the percentage of people able to successfully find the dog. It went from 3.9% to 6.8%, a very significant increase. So do you understand? Do you realize the significance of this experiment? There was no way the second group could have seen the picture. They lived far away from Britain and couldn't have seen it. But even so, it was only the success rate for the dog picture that went up. Why? How did that happen? Oh, wait, does this have something to do with that field or whatever it was that you were talking about earlier? A field not visible to the eye. So if more people know the then that information will pass through the field. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. hmm. Psych! <laughs> I was just kidding. You really shouldn't take me seriously. Well, I mean, the things I just told you about are true. They really did happen. But the results of that experiment really aren't anything to go by. They could have easily falsified them. In the end, I'm sure they were just in it for the ratings. They are a TV station, after all. Right. Man, I gotta admit, you had me there for a minute. I, uh, really thought you were serious. <laughs> of course not. Like I told you before, I'm sure it's all just pseudoscience. Uh, oh, okay, right. <laughs> all right, enough. We've got the key. Let's get out of here. Word. A field not visible to the naked eye. Morphogenetic field.